promise you that you will be the father of many nations. I will give you as many descendants as there are stars in the sky, and they will become great nations. And for 400 years, your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not their own. There they will be enslaved and mistreated. But I will punish the nations they serve as slaves. And I will set them free. After four generations, they will return to this land, the land that flows milk and honey. I will always keep the promise I have made to you and your descendants, for they will be my people and I will be their God. Are you all right? Yes, Sarah, but this time God spoke to me. God spoke to you? What did he say? He said, look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. <laughs> what? How could it be? We're childless and we're old. I don't know, Sarah but I have no doubt that God will fulfill his promise. He always does. The story you're about to see is true. It's found in the Bible in the book of Genesis. It's a story of a young boy named Joseph. It's a story about love and hate, about betrayal and forgiveness about jealousy and admiration, about dreams and disappointments. But mostly, it's a story about God's faithfulness in fulfilling the promises that He makes. Now Joseph was a dreamer and very ambitious, but also very spoiled, and his ten older brothers never cared much for Joseph. And father's favorite treatment of him only added to their meanness and jealousy. Happy birthday to you, my son. I look at you and sometimes I can't believe you're here. Your mother, Rachel, and I had always dreamed of having children, but we gave up hope. And then you came along. We realized dreams really do come true. You are my miracle child, my boy. Father, I'm not a boy. I'm 17. Yes, yes, I know. Look how you've grown. You're so special to me, Joseph. I know, Father. I'm You're special. special. I'm smart. smart. You I'm are set, set apart. apart. What is this? My birthday gift? It's beautiful, Father. I love it. Can you help me put it on? It's only for a moment you remind the whole The plans that heaven has for you will all too soon unfold So many different prayers I'll pray for all that you might do But most of all I want to know you're walking in the truth if I never told you I 
want you to know And as I watch you grow I pray that God will fill your heart with dreams And the faith that gives you courage To dare to do great things I'm here for you whatever this life brings So let my love give roots And help you find your wings And help you find your wings Well, how do I look? You look handsome! Just like me. Ha ha ha! Uh-uh-uh. And just where do you think you're going? I want to show my brothers my coat. No, 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 Joseph. You have your studies. Why can't I do what they do? Because for you, things are different. <sighs> You've said that all my life. I don't want to be different. I want to be like them. Joseph, they're my sons, and I love them. We're all one family, but you're not like them. Life is a lot harder for them than it ever will be for you. I see myself in all my sons, but I see God in you. Please, Father, please, let me go be with my brothers. I'll finish my work when I get back, I promise. I can never say no to you. Go ahead. Yes, thank you, Father. But be careful and be home before supper. I will, I promise. That is clear. Next in line and next of kin. I'll never ever quit. Never ever give in. Never ever quit. Never ever give in. I'm the strongest. Yes, it's true. I can tear an ox in two. I must be cruel to reach the top. I never ever quit. Never ever give up. Never ever quit. Never ever give up. No one smarter will find this. I'm the wisest of my kind. Stubborn is my middle name. I never ever stop. Never give up. No claim. Never ever stop. Never give up. And revered, and I have the longest beard. I'm the handsome brother here. We never give an inch, never ever show fear. Never give an inch, never ever show fear. I'm the poet of this clan. Learn to hunt and be a man. I am the one with the biggest feet. Well, it's something. Never give it up, never ever. comes father's favorite the miracle child what does he want look what i found a stray sheep who would not have wandered away had her shepherds been doing their jobs instead of dancing and singing leave us alone don't you have some scrolls to read or something so we took a break what's it to you a break 
but you're supposed to be working. What do you know about working? Look! Ow! That hurts! These are not working hands. They're soft and smooth. Of course they are. He's never done a hard days of work in his life. And what's this? Let me guess. Father. Yeah, isn't it great? He just gave it to me. What do you think? What do I think? I'll show you what I think. Yeah, let's show him, Judah. Yeah. yeah. Show him how Yeah, let's yeah. show him. Yeah. Yeah. Brother, yeah. Simon, Judah, stop. I think it's best we get back to work. Ugh. Ugh. That hurts. Why are they always so angry with me, Reuben? Did you have to wear that? This? But it's a gift from father. I wanted to show it off. Exactly. Hey, it's not my fault I'm his favorite. Can you just make yourself useful and tend to that part of the flock? But I just came to show off my coat. Why do I have Joseph, to- Joseph, just do what I say for your own sake. You don't work nearly as hard as we do. <laughs> what do they know? I work just as much as they do. Did you hear that, brothers? The dreamer says he works as hard as we do. <laughs> oh, come on, guys. You shouldn't be so hard on him. He's the youngest. He's spoiled. No, Benjamin is the youngest. But Joseph thinks he's better than us, especially with those dreams. Enough! Joseph is our brother, and he's just young and immature. That's all. Now, it's been a long day, so let's go get Joseph and walk back in peace, okay? Brothers, I had a dream, a most amazing dream. We were binding sheaves in a field. We? <laughs> in that case, it could only be a dream. <laughs> <laughs> Let him finish. And my sheaf arose and stood upright. And then your sheaves came and stood around and bowed down before my sheaf. So we will bow down to you? I'd have to be nearly dead before I bow down to you. You must have interpreted that dream wrong, little brother. It is you who will be bowing down before us. Bow down and kiss my feet, dreamers. <laughs> yeah, bow down and kiss Let my go. feet. Let go! Get your feet off of me! Stop! Stop it! Stop it! Are, are you okay, Joseph? What's the matter with you? Is this dreamer, this spoiled son of yours, what did he do? Besides the fact that he does hardly anything to help us, he has the audacity to say that he's better than us, that we are to bow down to him. Joseph, is this true? I had a dream, Father, and I was just telling them about it. A dream? Are you all angry? <laughs> because Joseph had a dream? Actually, Father, there were two dreams. The sun and the moon and the stars were all bowing down to me. Hmm, that's a strange dream. Do you think your mother and I are the sun and the moon and your brothers the stars and we will all bow before you? Now you see why we're upset? Now calm down. He doesn't know what he's saying. He's only a boy. Are all of you ready to leave for Shechem? Yes, Father. We have everything. Hold on. Wait. I'll go get my things. I want to go with you. No, 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 Joseph. It's better if you stay here with me. That's how it always is. Joseph gets to stay with Dad while we go to work. Goodbye, my sons. And may Jehovah watch over each of you. What's wrong, Joseph? Why do they treat me so bad, Father? Oh, Joseph. Sibling rivalry has affected this family for generations. I certainly had my issues with my brother. And after I made some bad mistakes, I thought he'd never forgive me. 
but I will never forget the moment when he ran to meet me with open arms, with forgiveness in his heart. Always remember, there is power in forgiveness. There is power in forgiveness. So much truth and wisdom in that phrase, a phrase that impacted Joseph later on in his life. Now Joseph wasn't the only dreamer in the family. A very long time ago, Jacob also had a powerful dream. He loved telling the story of his dream, and Joseph loved hearing it. It was about a stairway that went all the way to heaven, and the angels of God were going up and down on it. And high, high above, he saw the Lord who said to him, I am the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants this land and your seed will be as the dust of the earth, and all the nations of the earth will be blessed because of you. And then you woke up and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. I did not know it. <laughs> you know it by heart. Yes, it's one of my favorite stories. Such a beautiful dream. There's the smile I like to see. Hmm. Is something troubling you, Father? I was thinking about your brothers. They've been gone a while, and I'm worried about them. Then let me go and see how they are. No, no, no. Why not? I'm old enough to go, and besides, it'll put your mind at ease. I don't like seeing you like this. Let me do this for you, Father. I don't know, Joseph. It's dangerous, and I don't know what I would do if anything happened to you. Don't worry. I will be careful, I promise. Okay. But go quickly. Check on them, and bring me back a report. Yes, Father. I'll go and be back so fast you won't even miss me. I always miss you when you're not around. May the Lord protect you on your journey, my son. I hate this place. I can't wait to go home. The only good thing about being here is not having to see Joseph's smug face. I keep thinking about the way Father defended him and <clears throat> it makes me so angry. Put it in the past, Simeon. I can't. Those dreams were dishonoring to Father and insulting to each one of us. It was humiliating. Yeah, that's right. Who does he think he is? Wait, is that Joseph over there? Stop joking. I'm not in the mood. No, I'm not kidding. Look. Is that him? What's he doing here? Spying on us again, so he can go tell father. I think we should get rid of the past once and for all. So what are you thinking, Simeon? Let's kill him. And then we'll throw him into the well. We can say that a savage beast devoured him. And then we'll see what comes of his dreams. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. a great Simeon, idea. Simeon, no. Why not? He deserves it. Why not? Because he's our brother! Actually, half-brother. It doesn't matter. Do you realize what you are saying? We're talking about murder. Murdering our brother. It's a sin! Why are you defending him? You know deep down in your heart you'd never miss him. I know in my heart it wouldn't be right. Well, lucky for us, we have no problem with it. Simeon, please listen to me. I know you're angry. I know you're all angry but I refuse to believe that you're all okay with this. So what do you suggest? Okay, you could teach him a lesson. Brothers! Um, you could throw him in the well, but don't shed any blood. Brothers! Don't worry, I will get you out and back to father as soon as I can. What? 
What are you talking about? Get him! Get him! Stop it! Let me go! Yeah, take his coat off. What are you doing with my coat? Take it off for once and for all. Father gave this to me! No! No! Stop! I'm a dreamer. <laughs> I had a dream where all the stars were bowing down to me and the moon and the sun. <laughs> I'm headed to the city. Please don't keep him in there too long. Ah, uh, come on, Ruben. Don't ruin this for us. Let us at least enjoy it for a little while. Judah! Simeon! Get me out! Please! Get me out! Why do you dream your way out? <laughs> Wait till father hears about this. You're gonna be in big trouble. He's always telling on us. Let's just get rid of him now. Wait, I've been thinking about it and maybe Ruben's right. What do you mean? You were in an agreement just a few minutes ago. Do we really want his blood on our hands? Can we face father knowing that we've taken the life of his favorite son? Can you? What about you, Levi? And you, Issachar? What about you? No? That's what I thought. So that's it? We do nothing? Judah! Simeon! Get me out of here now! And you better not have ripped my coat! What if we get rid of him but we shed no blood? And how do you intend to do that? Ishmaelite traders. We can get rid of him and make some money at the same time. It's a win-win. Yeah! You're not gonna see him anymore. Bring up the dreamer. <sighs> Finally. How could you keep me down there for so long? You think this is funny? Wait. Wait. What are you doing? Who are these people? What's going on? Here, 20 shackles of silver. Just as we agreed. <laughs> you sold me? But I'm your brother. How could you? Hmm. Looks like he's never worked a day in his life. That'll change. <laughs> Let's go. Help me. Levi, please. Hurry up. Egypt is still a few hours of travel. Judah. Issachar. Simeon. Stop them. Judah. I'm your brother. Help me, please. I'm your brother! I'm your brother! You haven't taken him out yet? This has gone far too long. Joseph! Joseph! Where is he? What have you done with him? What we should have done a long time ago. The dreamer is gone. Did you kill him? Calm down, Reuben. We didn't kill him. We only sold him. You, you sold them? Sold them? Here, this is your portion. Joseph. Joseph! Joseph! He's long gone, and we're better because of it. How could you? Our own brother? What are we going to tell father? So the brothers took Joseph's robe, slaughtered a goat, and dipped the robe in the blood. Then they took the robe back to their father and said, We found this. Examine it to see whether it is your son's robe. But Jacob recognized it immediately and cried out loud. My son. No. Can I be? No. No. It cannot be. My son, my son, his robe, his robe. Then Jacob tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and mourned and wept for his son for many days. His robe! All his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused Joseph. to be comforted. Joseph's robe! My son, Joseph! It's dead! It's wrong! Even the sons felt ashamed when they saw their father's reaction to the news. 
for no one understood the death of Jacob's love for Joseph or the agony that he felt when he was told that his son was dead. Joseph! Joseph! No! Joseph! My son! My son! Meanwhile, in Egypt, Joseph was sold to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard. But God was with Joseph and was about to turn things around in his favor. Hmm, hard working. I see our Hebrew was not a bad decision. Never says a word. He does work hard, but I think it's mostly out of resentment. Where are you from, and why were you sold by your former master? My name is Joseph. I am a Hebrew from Canaan, my lord. But I am not a slave. I did nothing, absolutely nothing, to deserve this. You dare speak to the captain of the guard that way? I'll have you skinned alive. Enough. Just because a man speaks up doesn't mean he's trouble. How did you get here? Only the living God knows why, but perhaps he intends for me to learn to be humble and to trust him completely. But I keep remembering a story my father used to tell me about God being in unexpected places. And perhaps, perhaps I'm not as alone as I feel. Forgive me, my Lord. We have run into a problem. I have followed the plans precisely, but something is wrong and no one can figure it out. Am I supposed to figure it out? I don't know about such matters. If I may, my lord. You can read Egyptian? And also write it, my lord. My father taught me. Hmm, so he's an educated slave and behaves well? He shall work with me directly, starting today. I want him to oversee my household and all that I own. Yes, sir. And if I may say, a great choice. He's a man you can trust and a man who honors God. And so Potiphar put Joseph in charge of his household, and he entrusted to his care everything that he owned. From that time on, the blessing of the Lord was on everything that Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was well built and handsome, and after a while, his master's wife took notice of him. All these colors reminds me of the coat my father gave me. That was a lifetime ago. Oh, father, how I miss you. Well, well, well. Are you the wonderful slave my husband put in charge to oversee the household? Yes, mistress. My name is Joseph. Joseph, you seem sad. Is it your family? Mm. You miss them, don't you? Well, we're your family now. We're here to care for you. Is the master gone? Yes, mistress. Is there something I can help you with? I not only serve the master, I serve you as well. Let's see if you're all my husband makes you out to be. You know, Joseph, I've always had a thing for the finer things in life. Come, no one is here. Come be with me, Joseph. What? No, 
no, I can't. My master trusts me completely, and I will never betray his trust. Shh. He doesn't have to know. No. I won't tell. No one will know. Don't do this. I beg you, please, no. It'll be our little secret. I can't. No. Come, Joseph. Be with me. Please, mistress. You will do as I say. How can you ask me to do such great wickedness and sin against God? Joseph, I order you to stay. I can't. No, I must go. Joseph, how dare you humiliate me this way? Joseph! She kept his cloak beside her until his master came home. Then she told him that Joseph had tried to take advantage of her. Joseph! It was Joseph! When Potiphar heard the story, he had Joseph placed in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him kindness and favor. Lord, please do not forget me while I'm in this pit. Please, let me out. I haven't done anything. Please. Maybe, maybe it doesn't mean anything. Of course it does. Both of us with the same dream on the same night? It's got to mean something. And the dream was so vivid. It's all I can think about. Yeah, I know. I can't get it out of my head either. What's going on? We both had dreams, but there is no one to interpret them. Don't interpretations belong to God? Why don't you tell me your dreams? Tell you our dreams? What can you do to help? I know all about you. Never mind our dreams. What about your dream, Joseph? Look where you are. Your dreams of greatness are dead. It's not about me being great. It's about serving someone greater, and I will trust in him. I will never let go of the dreams he gave me. Oh, never mind him. I'll tell you my dream. There was a vine right in front of me, and on the vine, there were three branches. As soon as it budded, it blossomed, and its clusters became grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes, and I squeezed them into his cup, and then I placed the cup in his hand. The three vines signify three days. In three days, Pharaoh will bring you back to the palace a free man. <sighs> I wish it were true. But it is true. And when you're free, will you tell Pharaoh about me and my gift? Please, promise me. <sighs> Some gift. Making up fairy tales and giving hope to the foolish? But what if it is true? Tell him your dream and see what he says. Here's my dream. I'm taking three baskets of bread to Pharaoh, one on top of the other, when the baskets fall. I pick up the bread, when suddenly a swarm of birds came out of nowhere and attacked me. They keep pecking at me in the face and in the eyes. <gasps> what does that mean? What is it? What does it mean? I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yes, you do. Tell me. Tell me. <sighs> the three baskets also signify three days. <laughs> Did you hear that? In three days, I will also be released. I can hardly wait. That's wonderful. Yes. Yes, yes the day yes. is almost <laughs> here. No. Did you just say no? In three days, Pharaoh will behead you. 
and birds will feed off your flesh. What? No! No! So, the baker is gonna meet his maker? No! You don't know what you're talking about. No! You're just a slave. But three days later... Would you stop pacing? You're making me nervous. Get up. Come with me. Pharaoh has summoned you to the palace. Let's go. I will not forget your kindness to me. I promise. And you, let's go. Does Pharaoh want to see me too? Wait, where are you taking me? Move, move. Now it came to pass on the third day, it was Pharaoh's birthday. He made a feast for all his servants. He restored the chief butler to his position again, and he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. But he hung the chief baker, just as Joseph had said. But the chief butler did not remember Joseph. The promise was forgotten, and the days turned into years. But through it all, God was with Joseph. Lord. Have you forgotten me? No, I refuse to believe that. I still remember my father's stories. Perhaps I'm not as alone as I feel. Perhaps God is in this place and I don't know it. I thought I did what's right. I thought I had the answers. I thought I chose the surest road, but that road brought me here. So I put up a fight and told you how to help me. Not just when I have given up, the truth is coming clear. You. Oh
After two years, Pharaoh had a dream and his spirit was troubled. He called for all the wise men of Egypt and told them his dreams, but there was no one who could tell Pharaoh the meaning of them. Then suddenly, the chief butler remembered Joseph and Pharaoh sent for him. Fools! I'm surrounded by fools. My Lord. Is this the one you spoke of? Yes, my excellency. I'm told you merely need to hear a dream, and you can explain it? Not I, your excellency. <laughs> but I thought... <laughs> the explanation comes from God. <sighs> None of my wise men or magicians, or any of my gods could help me. What makes you think your God is any different? He is the one true God. He will give Pharaoh the answers he seeks. Will you tell me your dream, Your Excellency? Every night is the same. I'm standing by the Nile. Seven healthy cows graze peacefully on the bank. But then seven horrible sickly cows come from the same river. Suddenly, they begin to devour the healthy cattle. And yet, the cows remain as sickly as before. And then I wake up. Is there more? Yes. Another dream always follows. Seven years of grain, full and golden, grow from a single stalk. Suddenly, seven ears, hardening and scorched, spring up on the same stalk. Follow the seven good ears. All that remains are shriveled grains unfit to eat. Pharaoh's dreams are one and the same. God is showing you what he is about to do. There will be seven years of abundance, and then seven years of famine will follow and destroy the land. Egypt may not survive. Can this devastation be stopped? And if so, what can be done? You must find a wise and discerning man, a man you can trust. During the good years, put him in charge to collect and store the food in reserve. This food will be used during the seven years of famine that will come upon Egypt, so that the country will not be ruined by the famine. Can we find anyone like this man who has the Spirit of God in him? If I may, Your Excellency, speak. I suggest Joseph the Dreamer. God's wisdom is in him, and through his deeds, I am confident we shall prosper. Do you trust him? With my life. Very well then, arise. I should give you power over all Egypt. Only Pharaoh will be greater than you. You shall be in charge of my palace. And your name now shall be Zephaniah Penea and shall be known as savior of the world.
During the seven years, the land produced plenty of food. Joseph stored up huge quantities of grain, like the sand of the sea. And there was much joy and celebration in the land because of the abundance in it. Seven years of abundance came to an end. The seven years of famine began, just as Joseph had said. There was famine in all the other lands, but in the land of Egypt, there was food. When the famine became so severe everywhere, people from all around the region came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph. Next. How many in your family? Five. My sisters and I. Thank you. Next. Who's next? We are, my Lord. My brothers and I have traveled far from Canaan. Our wives and children are hungry. How many are you? There are 10 of us here, and at home we have our father and our youngest brother. We don't ask for charity. We'll pay with silver. Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. My lord, what's wrong? Looks like you've seen a ghost. So he became quiet, remembering the dreams of his youth, the one where all his brothers would bow down to him. It is the lord of the land, Sephaneth Panea. Quickly, on your knees. But the nightmares also flooded his memory. Twenty shackles of silver, just as we agreed. <laughs> yeah, he's off with the sleeve of yeah, take his coat off. <laughs> See you later, dream boy. <laughs> but I'm your brother. I'm your brother. And suddenly, he felt like that 17-year-old boy again. The boy that was sold and deprived of seeing his father. The boy who couldn't see his little brother Benjamin grow up. And he grew angry. Don't give them anything. Ten foreigners asking for grain? They're spies, hoping to see where we store our grain. I don't believe their story. No, Your Excellency. Everything we say is true. We have only come to buy food for our families. Then prove it. Bring your youngest brother. What would that prove? That you're not lying. And if you're telling the truth, then you can buy all the grain you want. Until then, arrest them. Arrest them all. 
Wait. What? what? No, we didn't do anything. What's going on? We're innocent. No. It's been three days. This is all your fault, Ruben. Why'd you tell him that we're 12 brothers? You should have said there's just 10 of us. No, Simeon. Ruben did what was right. Lying is what has brought us here. Don't you see? God is punishing us because of what we did to Joseph. It has to be. Quiet. I don't want to hear this. But it's true. Didn't I tell you all not to sin against our own brother? Didn't I? But you all didn't listen. And now look at us. God is holding us accountable for his blood. Shh, someone's coming. My lord, please, this is an injustice. We've only come to buy food. Silence. If you are who you say you are, one of you will remain here in prison, while the rest of you take the grain to your households so they will not starve. But you must return with your younger brother. Benjamin? No, we can't. You must. This will prove you're telling the truth. You! You will remain here. Simeon? The rest of you. Go now, quickly! No! Do something, please! We won't return for you, brother! Ruben! I promise! Please! The brothers returned back to Jacob and told him about how Simeon was kept in prison and as if their hearts were not heavy enough with Simeon's imprisonment, when they stopped for the night and opened their sacks to feed their donkeys, they found the silver they used to pay for the grain in their sacks. To prove their innocence, they brought back double the silver found in the sacks along with other honey and spices and even though it took much convincing, Jacob allowed their younger brother Benjamin to be taken to Egypt just as the governor requested. My Lord, the family of Canaanites have returned. Welcome. Your Excellency, this is our youngest brother, Benjamin. I see you kept your word. So, Benjamin, tell me of your mother and father. My mother is no longer alive. In my father's word, I'm here. He likes me to stay close. I'm a long way from home. Brothers! Oh, brothers! I'm so happy to see you! You must be hungry after your journey. Come, you'll be my guests. No, you will sit in this order. You here, you there, you over here. How is this possible? We are being seated by the order of our birth? Serve the food! A toast to brothers. To, to brothers. brothers! The brothers couldn't understand why the governor asked for Benjamin or why he had prepared a lavish feast for them. And they were even more surprised when he sat them in the order of ages. And even though Benjamin's portion was five times more than theirs, they still feasted, drank freely, and celebrated with the Lord of the land. At daybreak, they departed with loaded sacks of grain, when suddenly they were stopped by Pharaoh's men. You there, stop! The governor has asked, why have you repaid evil for good? What? We have done nothing wrong. You have taken our master's silver cup, stolen it right out of his house. We have done no such thing. Look for yourself. If any one of us has it, let him be put to death and we will remain your servants for life. Go ahead, look, check for yourself.
Benjamin? No. No. You will be punished for what you have done. There must be some sort of mistake. Please, it's not possible. I didn't steal it. You believe me, right? No, it can't be. No. Let's go. What? No, we didn't we do didn't anything. anything. Ruben, what? tell them. We're in What's zone. going on? Joseph was still in the house when his brothers came in, and they threw themselves in the ground before him. What is this evil you have done? We don't know how the cup got in there, but how can we prove our innocence? God has punished us. We have nothing left but to be your slave. No, only the man who had the cup will be my slave. No, not Benjamin. Stop, please, no. Please take me instead. Take me. Take me instead. Take me. No, no, take me. Take me, your grace, but please let the boy go. You would sacrifice yourselves for a half brother who's spoiled by your father? Yes, my lord. Why? Why should you care if I take him, beat him, and make him my slave? Because we would not make our father suffer again. Again? What do you mean, again? Our brother was not killed by wolves. We were blinded by jealousy and sold him into slavery. For 20 years, we have lived with that guilt. Please, please, my lord. We can't go back without the boy. My father couldn't bear it a second time, and neither could we. If anybody should be punished, it should be us. At that moment, as Joseph thought about his life and all he went through from the moment that he was sold into slavery and rose to be the head of Potiphar's household, from when he was thrown in jail and then taken to the palace, he realized that God had been with him his entire life. And forgiveness began to fill his heart until he thought it would burst. He could hear his father's voice. Joseph, always remember, there is power in forgiveness. I see myself in all my sons, but I see God in you. His brothers needed forgiveness, but they also needed to see the Lord in him. Leave them with me. Out, quickly. <sighs> Do not be afraid. I will not harm any of you or our father. Look at me. I am your brother, Joseph. What? No, what? Joseph? But it can't be. Joseph? How, how is this even possible? Please forgive me. <laughs> it was all my fault, Joseph. <laughs> oh, Joseph, forgive us. <laughs> Don't you see? I already have my brothers. I forgive you. Joseph! My brother. This was all part of a greater plan. It was God who sent you here to save lives during the famine. What you meant for evil, God turned for good. And now you will join me here, all of you, along with your families, and I will provide for you. And the brothers went back home and told their father that his son Joseph was still alive. My son! Father? Joseph! Joseph! Father! My son! Oh, father! My boy! My son! God has given me a day. Father, how I've missed you! We're finally together, I see you again. The day Joseph had waited for was finally here, and he celebrated with jubilation because the dream Joseph had so long ago was now being fulfilled before his very eyes. Just as God was with Joseph, he's always with us too. He has never left us, and he never will. For as Joseph and his father learned, and we are all still learning today, God is indeed in this place, and perhaps we don't know it.